Alright, so in this video, we are going to add walls in our floor plan view. So if you want to use the exact exercise files that I'm using right now, you can always go to my learningwithreachwordpress.com and then go to the training files. And the file that I'm using right now is this one. Okay, it will only cost you $2 for this one. So if you want to support me for doing this kind of videos, so you can always um, avail the exercise file that I'm using right now. So you can follow along or you can always use your own files and follow the exercise that I'm doing. Okay, so let's go back. So here I'm going to create walls or I'm going to add walls to my building model. Alright, so I'm going to select here wall architectural. So let's click this one. And then here on the modify place wall contextual tab. So we have three panels. So we have draw, we have placement, we have join. Okay, placement panel here. This is a new feature in Revit 2026. So in Revit 2025, which is this one, Revit 2025, as you can see, there's no option like that here. So we only have draw panel and then placement panel. So in 2026, so we now have placement. So we have place by room and then wall place by segment. So let's read this one. So it creates finished walls within a room's boundaries by clicking on the line indicator of potential walls. The other one is creates a finished wall by clicking on the wall segment in the canvas. So if I select here, uh, place by room, click that one, so hover your pointer and then it will highlight the potential wall, potential wall that you will be creating, right? So if I click that one, so it will create the wall. There you go. And then it, let's have a look at the 3D view. Let's click this icon here and then that's the wall. Okay, so let me go back again to the ground floor plan and I'm going to undo that. I don't want to do that one. Okay, let me just go to this area here and then let's select the wall tool, architectural. And then from the properties, I'll be selecting generic 150. Okay, so for the draw panel, so I'm gonna select here uh, rectangle, okay, because this one is rectangular, so I'm going to select here rectangle tool. And then here on my options bar, so the option here is height. Okay, and then you can specify up to what height you will be creating your wall. Okay, it can be from your ground floor up to main floor or main roof. Okay, and then you can also select your unconnected and then you can specify the height of the wall that you will be creating. Okay, now let's say I'm going to check first the elevation view. So let me cancel the tool, modify. So let's go to elevation and then let's go to south elevation. So there's our level. So what I want to do is I want to create my, my floor. ground floor to main floor okay so ground floor to main floor okay let me go back to the ground floor so let's select wall architectural 150 rectangle so here i can specify the height of my wall so let's say from ground floor up to main floor okay and then for the location line here i'll just select uh, finish face exterior. So let's click this one. And then I'm going to click the upper left corner. And then the lower right corner. Let's click that. And there you go. So I just created the wall. And then let me select here modify. And then let's see the 3D view. Click that. And there you go. So there's now our wall. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the temporary dimensions of our wall. 
Okay, so let's go to our ground floor again. By the way, um, let me just redo my wall. I do not want to place my wall up to uh, main floor. Okay, so I just want to have the height of 8,000. So I'm going to select the walls. And then I'm going to select delete. Alright, so let me select the wall again. Okay, rectangle. Okay, height. And then for this one, I'll just select unconnected. And then I'll just change this to 8,000. Okay, again, uh, finish face exterior. So I'm going to click from here to here. There you go. And then modify. Now, I'm going to edit the temporary dimensions of a wall. So, I'm going to select the wall again. So, architecture wall. Okay, and then for the location line, I'll change this to wall center line. And then this time, I'll be using the line tool. So, I'm going to select the line tool. And then I'm going to snap at the midpoint. So, I click here. And then I click to the other side. There you go. Okay. Right. And then after that, I'm going to select here, modify. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select the wall here. So if I click the wall, as you can see, there are a temporary dimension that will appear. So you can actually select that one, click, and then you can change it. Okay, if you want. So, let me zoom in. If you zoom in, you will notice that it will change the snapping of your temporary dimension. Right? So, I'm going to select modify to deselect or escape. So, if I zoom out, if I click the wall, okay, so it snaps to that particular area. So, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the distance. Okay, so I'm going to change the distance. So let's say for this one, I'm going to make this 3,600. Okay, so 3,600. So I'm changing the value of my temporary dimension and then enter. Okay, there you go. So I just change it and then I'll just uh, click outside. Okay. So you can do that to your wall. So every time you click a wall, you can see a temporary dimension. If you want to change the value of that, so you can always click and then change it. Okay? So you just click that. You see there's a temporary dimension. Okay? Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is that we are going to explore the options of selecting our object, okay? Right? So th that's just the exercise after we just need to create that wall. Okay, now for this one, so let's explore these options here. So we have select links, select underlay elements, select pinned elements. So we have select elements by face and drag elements on selection. If select links is check here it will allows you to select the link and the elements so if you have a link file in your project you will be able to select that link file okay if this is check but if it is unchecked if you have a link file in your project you will not be able to select it okay this one is not a link file or oh, this is just an import imported child CAD file but if this is a link file and then this one is unchecked you will not be able to select that link file okay just remember that so what's the use of this so if you do not want to move or unintentionally move your link file so you can uncheck this one so that you can't select your link file okay another option is if you do not want to move your link file or your imported CAD file okay you can always pin that so you can select it and then you can select the pin button here so that you don't move it accidentally just like this 
imported CAD file, it is uh, link. Ah, uh, it is pinned currently, so you cannot just um, move that away like that. So it's pinned. So that's the best practice so that you don't move it unintentionally. So the other options here is select underlay elements. So it allows you to select elements in the underlay of a view. Okay, so if you have an underlay on your model, you can control it. Okay, so you can uncheck this if you do not want to select your underlay element. Okay, if you do not want to un unintentionally move your underlay elements you can always uncheck this one but if you want to select underlay elements okay you can just check that one okay the other one is pinned elements so select pinned elements so right now it is checked that's why we were able to select this pinned element okay as you can see it's pinned right but if i'm going to uncheck this you will see that you can't select it, right? So don't wonder why is it you can't select this pinned element. Okay, because this one is pinned and then this one is unchecked. That's why you can't select it. So if you want to select pinned elements, you just need to check that one. Okay? And then you will be able to select again. Right? Okay, so if I go to the 3D view, Okay, so if this is um, unchecked, select elements by, by face. You see, I cannot click the face of my wall here. Okay, right? I cannot click. Right now, I'm clicking it, but I cannot select. But if this one is checked, so as you can see, I can click the face of the walls, right? Or any faces, right? So you can select, but if this is unchecked, you cannot select the face, okay? Again, so that you don't select unintentionally your face and move it unintentionally. So it's up to you. So you can always uncheck or check select elements by face here. And then the other one here is drag elements on selection. So that means, let me just go to the ground floor. If I If that one is checked, so I can drag the elements on selection, meaning I can hold, I can click this and then hold my left click and then I can drag like that, right? Okay, so click, hold your left click and then you can drag, okay? So if this is unchecked, okay, if that is unchecked, I'm going to click this. And then I'll try to hold my left click and drag. You see, it doesn't allow me, right? So click, drag. So I cannot. So I still need to select and then move my pointer over and then hold again my left click so I can drag. But I cannot hold my, I cannot click and then hold my left click, drag. See, I cannot. So if this is check, I can click that hold the left click and then I can drag. Okay, so that's how you use this selection tools that we have here. Okay, so these tools that we have here is the same as these tools here, okay? So they are just the same. So this is also the select links, uh, select underlay elements, select pinned elements, select elements by face and drag elements on selection so these five options here are the same as this one okay so you can access it here or you can access also from here okay so that's it for this uh, simple exercise of creating walls so we are still going to explore more on creating walls in our future video so if you have any comments questions or suggestions you can Put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you for watching guys. Have a nice day.